Hey guys, what is up? Love to back here again and thanks for checking out the video. So today we're going to do another little crash course video, um, kind of a redo of the previous video series that I did. Uh, recently I actually did a re-record of those videos, but I ended up not using them just because I left out a lot of stuff and I had to do a lot of editing and I just decided to scrap it. And now I'm just going to go fresh at it um, while in the midst of the corona, which I wasn't uh, recording it during then so now we are in the midst of the corona and all kinds of crazy shit is kicking off and ruth bader ginsburg just died uh, a couple days ago so you know it's just gonna get crazy but anyway so what i want to do is go through a little crash course uh series with the ak platform and the ar platform i uh, will be doing the ar later i just want to do the ak right now uh for one particular reason is because as i said before we are in the corona still one nice thing about having a diversification about your guns and what ammunition uh, ammunition you use is the availability obviously what we're seeing now obviously the 762 and the 545 are more expensive like probably twice the price but they are there as opposed to the 556 223 that has gone vanishing along with the nine millimeter that is now uh i don't even know last time i checked it was like 50 cents or something like that 556 is like almost a dollar around it's like fuck me sideways billy but anyway so what we're going to be doing is talking about the ak now for people who had not seen the previous uh series i'm going to be talking about it but kind of from both hands i'm not going to go left hand only right hand only i could but i would get less views so i just want to do kind of an all-encompassing view for everybody and no matter what their hand in is because that's what i believe in a united america so anyway let's get right into it so the AK has some a lot of fun things. Main thing is is the fact that it's reliable and it's very simple. It's like caveman kind of technology. There's very few switches and knobs that you ever have to worry about. Basically, there's two. There's the safety lever and then the charging handle. That's the only thing you have to worry about. And then obviously you have the trigger, uh, which is you know obviously kind of obvious. Obviously kind of obvious. But anyway, so what we're going to be doing is just simple, basic manipulation of it. Um, and we're going to go from there. We're going to talk about reloading, uh, attack reloading, malfunction clearances, and all kinds of shit like that. So let's get right into it. Okay, so this seems kind of basic and kind of unnecessary, but I want to do this as a from a standpoint of you are watching this video and you want to learn how to run an AK and you have no idea, and I repeat, absolutely no idea what the fuck you're doing. You don't want to shoot your fucking foot off. So this is what we're going to do. So safety lever, charging handle, and then you have your mag release button, which is more kind of a flipper, kind of old school kind of style. So the first thing we want to talk about is going to be the safety. Kind of a negative or a positive, depending on how you want to do it. Uh, when safety is on, the gun cannot be charged. Uh, I don't know if that's by design or whatever, but obviously we have the safety is on and also acts as kind of a dust cover right there. We swipe the safety off, we open this area up. So now our charging handle can go all the way back and reciprocate and load our precious ammunition in there, right? So one thing to keep in mind, uh, as we'll kind of later get into, because AKs are designed to go full auto, you don't necessarily have to have the safety in the full down or the full up for the safety to be on or off, if that makes any sense, because the full auto would be right here. And as you can see, it's not completely down. I go up a little bit and look, oh, look, the gun went off. Crazy, right? And just the same, if I get kind of a half safety right about there, gun will not go, whatever. So this is kind of a downside of the AK design just because it's just kind of bullshit. It's just kind of a mushy thing and that you hopefully will work when you need it to work and that's why i kind of just uh, aggressively pushing it down is probably the best way of doing it and if your ak safety lever is too stiff you can just take the top cover off swivel this up 90 degrees so it's pointing up like a shark fin and then kind of pull it out and then it kind of loosens it up because it's just a piece of sheet metal and once you stretch it out it makes it a little bit looser a little bit easier to use but i like it having a nice little positive click and not too loose because otherwise the shit can start swiping up and swiping down when you don't really want to especially for left handers because if we're carrying it in a sling, as you can see, this is what we got to deal with. And if we're wearing kit, stuff like that, that thing can knock that safety around. And I like to have it a little bit more positive so it doesn't do that. So just kind of peace of mind there. Once we have our safety down, obviously, as I said, charging handle can be operated. So how do we get the safety down? That's the personal preference thing that we're going to talk about real quick. Uh, Right-handers, God bless you. Um, you have a really easy time because you can just take that middle finger, swipe it down. Or if you want to, maybe even front finger, whatever you want to do. You know, you're, the world was made for you, so you have options when it comes to that. For left-handers, uh, here's where it gets kind of shitty. Um, there are aftermarket safeties that you can attach to it, but I'm just going to go off as if it's a bare bone, AK that you picked off a communist, I mean, just uh, gun store, whatever you want to do. Um, so what I like to do is kind of run it 
in a muzzle up kind of shit. Now, again, depending on your situation, who knows what kind of context you're in. Home defense, whatever the hell, you know, it is what it is. So just kind of bear with me here. Let's say you're running a muzzle up. This is how I kind of like to do it. So I'm ready to go into a room or I got muzzle down. I'm ready to go into a room. I have the weight of the gun support in this hand. Uh, stock is either on my shoulder, you're getting balanced, or it's underneath my armpit, balanced. So basically this hand is doing most of it. This is just kind of your finesse hand, and I just like to have either on the grip, or uh, a grip on the mag well, or I like to have it kind of underneath the front hand guard. Either way. So basically all I like to do is take my thumb, swipe it, and then roll hand out, and then that's how I get my front grip. You can also, if you like to do it more on the mag well, you can swipe it down here and then make sure you tuck that thumb when you go for this grip and then grip the mag well like this. Uh, if, you, you, if you do this and then leave it up, you'll understand why that's not a great idea. So just be cognizant of that. However you choose to manipulate the safety, it's not rocket science. Just find a way that works best for you and then rock it out. I, again, I like to go muzzle up uh, looking through kind of my, my barrel here and just looking at my target, swiping safety off and then getting on target. Just like that. And as you can see, I do a little AR flick. Bad habit. <clears throat> or good habit, I don't really know. So anyway, uh, otherwise, charging handle uh, is pretty fucking simple. This is why uh, it's kind of a weird how left-handed the AK is. Because uh, charging handle is right here. Obviously, that makes it really nice for charging it. And also, it makes it really nice to actually look into the chamber and see what's going on. If you have a kind of a DP action going on or anything like that, you can easily look in there and be like, oh, yeah, it's fucked up and figured out what's going on there. For my right-handers, people either like to come over the top like this, or they like to go underneath like this. Either way, uh, whatever floats your boat. Um, when people have optics here, underneath is probably gonna be a little bit easier than really coming over the top, um, but it's gonna be personal preference. Uh, if I was a right-hander, um, I probably would just go underneath, just because by the time you lock that magazine in, your hand's kind of already right here to uh, charge it. So, it's kind of my opinion. Take it or leave it. Now, let's go into rocking the mag in. So, for people who do not know, obviously that's why you're watching this video, right? The AK mag is not like any other mag, or at least more westernized style magazines where it's just a simple push in, push out kind of thing. These have a little bit of lug attachments here. You can see the back lug pretty well. You can't really see the front, there we go. Just put it on my white pasty face. Um, the front lug needs to lock in first into the trunnion up here, and then the back part needs to click into the actual tab that it locks in. So, really quick trick of it is this little pin right here, this uh, rivet, if you can see here, this little dimple right there. What I like to do is imagine that as a bar going straight through the rifle, and then which it's not, <clears throat> but I like to imagine that's a bar, and I'm trying to hook this front lip onto that bar, and if you do that, and, and if you're looking at it, or if you're reloading kind of like this, you I can probably nail it 99 out of 100 times. I mean, sometimes you don't get the angle quite right, but, you know, it works for me. And again, it is on the other side um, of the rifle. So that is one little trick I like to use. Other people like to say putting knuckles to the charging, or <laughs> knuckles to the, uh, to the, can't think, uh, the foregrip, forearm grip, the area where you hold the rifle so you don't burn yourself. You put your knuckles to there and then just rock it in. I think that's a little bit unnecessary movement. And also it's kind of an odd articulation, especially if you're going muzzle up and now you have to do this. I don't know, it just feels a little weird to me. Uh, most of the time I'm gonna be reloading is gonna be in my arm or if I'm super duper fast for the gram, uh, just right like that. So it's gonna be uh, personal preference as is all things in life. So after that, that is pretty much it for the basic operation of the weapon now we can get into the fun stuff which is going to be reloading now for reloading and this is why i'm going to recommend you buy very high quality magazines and i will be doing a video on my magazines that i like to use in a different video uh because two we've already gone up to 10 minutes we haven't talked about shit so let's get right into the whole magazine thing so first thing is going to be kind of your your russian style reload or whatever you want to call it which is basically this magazine is empty and I'm going to use my new magazine that I was handily, standardly uh, sitting in my pocket. Whip it out. I'm going to use this to actually knock on the tab and then get that old magazine out and then rock this one in. So it's going to look something like this. Let's see this one. Uh, probably this is better. So press up. Ba, ba, ba. Uh, sit, 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 sit. 
gun goes click and I'm going to quickly grab magazine butt of the gun goes underneath my arm grab magazine push it out rock it in and then swivel it slightly and then charge the charge the gun and then press out and then we're back in business kind of thing so kind of walk through a little bit of that now there are a couple orientations you can do when using your new magazine to knock out the old mag you can use it like this with my bullets facing away from the gun or you can kind of karate chop it like this with the bullets underneath the gun it's gonna be personal preference um personally especially if you're coming out of a if you're coming out of a speed pouch it's very easy just to go um you know kind of chop it i really really like though especially here here is actually eh, it's just gonna depend um how you want to run your magazines um but find which way works for you I find that if I put the, the magazine, or excuse me, the bolts out with the magazine, it's a little bit easier to do because I'm using more shoulder rather than kind of using like my arm, kind of the chopping kind of thing. It's a little bit stronger. It's a little bit tighter too because I don't want to do this weird like chicken wing shit. And then also too, I just felt that pop. <clears throat> uh, my shoulder is fucked up uh, pretty significantly too, I might add. It's, 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 not a, it's not a good situation. That actually caused me quite a bit of pain. <laughs> That fucking thing popped out. Um, but anyway, so this is a little bit more easier for me and it's also more comfortable because I don't have to articulate my shoulder so much. Uh, but this is a thing, just be prepared and be very, very aware that when you swipe the old mag out, uh, that you do it kind of a push rather than a slice. The problem is if you have bullets in your round nose sticking out right here and you slice, a lot of times you can catch that front of the round right out there on the tab and that's gonna fuck up your gun. Fuck the magazine and you're not gonna be able to lock it in so now you're gonna have to like finger it weird ways to get that round in there and then finally be able to seat it so just be a little bit aware of that if that ever happens so that is one way and then that i think that is probably the easiest way but also as well make sure you get high quality magazines that have a spine and the front these do not because these are just kind of fucking range mags kind of thing where i just like to destroy and trash them and as you can see how much wear and tear on that magazine is going to occur over time so just be aware of that uh ak mags are made to get a beating so just make sure you got good quality mags something like that so the next is kind of your uh kind of i don't even know what to call it basically instead of using a tool on a tool i'm using what god intended a thumb on a tool so instead of using magazine i'm going to push out press click till i'm empty and then i'm going to grab mag and i'm going to basically put the magazine parallel to the other magazine with my thumb extended and I'm just going to simply press out and then I press out my magazine's already right here and I just simply press in rotate and then charge now people might ask on the other side of that screen why do you rotate the gun well one couple reasons one just articulating this much is just it's a little bit more ergonomic to just come straight up and a little bit more stronger too if you have a dirty weapon stuff like that uh, but mainly, I'm just kind of ingraining in my brain when I cycle the charging handle, I always go port down. Why? Just because if I ever have a malfunction, I see some shits right here, I'm just going to do this real quick anyway. So it's just a kind of an ingraining in my brain for muscle memory. People don't like that term. I don't give a fuck. Everybody knows what you're talking about when you say muscle memory. But just to be kind of aware, that's why I'm doing that. I would recommend everybody do that. Two, and then that's why also why I like for right-handers to go like this and then go like this because you are pointing that uh, ejection port to the ground uh, instead of like this where shit seems like it just fucking fly up and fall right back in the action. Just kind of my personal preference. But anyway, so at speed of using our thumb on the thing, safety off, we go bam, bam, bang, ten, click, and ah, and then we charge it just like that. So. Which one you choose, it's up to you. Um, personally, I think the going from, I'll, I'll try both as fast as I can and just see kind of where it happens here. So let's go here, click. Okay, that's not bad. Not bad, speed it on, speed it on. Problem is, one thing I would recommend too is wearing gloves. Uh, one, for the heat, and then two, because I'm a pussy bitch, and the AK mags are extremely fucking sharp, excuse me, mags. The AKs are just extremely fucking sharp, especially some of these metal magazines that you can find. So just be aware of that. And also too, unlike ARs, the gun itself is just, 
it's kind of crude in a lot of ways. And a lot of times this, dove, uh, this dust cover right here is very, very sharp. So if it is a little bit sharp, maybe take a little file on that bitch, get it down. Also the safety lever can be very sharp. Uh, it's just a sharp gun and I'm used to ARs and I'm used to my soft American lifestyle. So I don't like sharp shit. Just, just be aware of it. So I recommend gloves when you're actually running AKs and stuff like that. So let's get into the other way as fast as we can. Oh, well, blue for here we go. So it's, it's pretty much the same speed. I just think economics of motion dictates that using my finger to knock it out is a little bit easier. Now here's the last one that I think is a little bit more <laughs> uh, pragmatic and more realistic of the kind of reload most people are going to do when they shoot an, an AK, which is going to be either at the range or if you're in some shit, you're probably still going to do this, which is basically like, I'm here. Oh no, I'm empty. So it, it doesn't really matter what you do. Just pick one that works for you. Uh, realistically, that's going to be your more likely AK reload because you're either going to be at the range, you're going to be kind of nonchalant, blah, 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 or you're actually in a fight, in which case you're going to shoot till the gun's dry, get behind cover, fuck this mag, new mag in, and then go, you know, kind of thing instead of having really about like speed. Um, the speed is nice, but realistically, not too terribly um, of an issue. Uh, in case that shit starts breaking out and shooting and stuff like that. So we talked about the main operation of the gun. We're almost at 20 minutes. My God. <laughs> so let's talk a little bit about kind of malfunctioning. So unlike the AK, or excuse me, unlike the AR, this thing does malfunction a lot more. Just kidding. Uh, unlike the AR, the AK is not a tap rack bang kind of thing for an immediate reaction. There is no tap in this magazine. Um, so if I have an AK and I go click, I'm just going to Again, pivot gun and then charge it. Hopefully whatever hell is fucking it up falls out of the gun, allowing me to keep shooting bad guy or keep shooting paper, whatever I'm doing. If there is an issue, most of the time that will fix it. If the gun ceases to work, um, a lot of times what can happen, because the AK is very loose in here and stuff, as you can see, this is the top cover, the dust cover is off. You can see how much room in there there is for a round to get back in there. Now, how likely is that to happen? Pretty unlikely, but it does happen. In that case, a lot of times what you have to do is kind of your AK immediate reaction speed fixing shit. I'm, I don't have uh, shoes on right now, so I'm not going to do it. But basically, I'm going to take this gun and either do one of two things. I can mortar it where I'm going to basically come down on the ground and press on the charge handle at the same time driving it into the ground or into my knee right here because uh, I don't really want, maybe I'm in a position where I don't necessarily want to be on the ground and I want to keep my mobility up so I can bring it up put it on my knee or something like that if that doesn't work you're gonna have to kick start the bitch which is kind of like uh, take take barrel end point it away from your fucking face and actually I would recommend pointing at the bad guy if at all possible and then just kick starting it you know like a bike kind of thing so uh, that's going to probably get enough force to actually get that round out of there if there is some type of like malfunction in there. Um, but again, if there is something in here, especially underneath the trigger, uh, trigger fire control group, um, most likely you're probably going to have to disassemble the gun. That fucking sucks. So that's the only thing that can happen in an AR that really, excuse me, that can happen in an AK that really can't happen in an AR. It's probably possible in a weird fucking way. You can obviously get it above the bolt carrier. But to get something back in the fire control group is pretty unlikely on AR. It is possible on AK. I've never seen it, but I've seen it on YouTube, so I know what happens. <clears throat> in that case, dust cover comes off, and then you can either try to finger it out of here, or you have to take the whole thing apart enough to be able to get that case out. Uh, one other thing that sucks about AKs is the fact that a lot of the ammunition that you're going to be finding to be able to shoot is most likely going to be surplus ammunition now surplus ammunition is great because it's affordable and cheap and plentiful and blah 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 well sometimes you get some really shitty batches though and a lot of times what can happen is the fucking thing can have a stuck case if you have a stuck stuck case nothing in the fucking world will help you unless you don't have a cleaning rod which this rifle does not i don't know where it is it's somewhere in the basement i'm gonna have to go put it back on um, but I've seen it happen, and I think there's actually one YouTube video I've seen where that dude was actually in a gunfight in, like, Middle East or something like that, 
using an AK or whatever like that. And then he just realized he had a fucking stuck case uh, in the breech that would not come out of the barrel. And that is a shit sandwich for everybody involved in that one. You, your teammates, fucking everybody. I don't know. It's just not good. So that is pretty much the only thing to be aware of. I don't think I'm really missing anything besides a couple of, uh, I, I guess I'll do it real quick. For one-handed manipulation, let's say I have a malfunction with this gun. Again, nice thing about the AK, the tap rack bang doesn't really exist. So basically the only thing I need to do, hopefully in order to clear it, is just charge the weapon. So let's say I have a arm down, but I can still, luckily I'm buff enough, not very as much as I used to be, because of my injuries, um, I'm buff enough to be able to use uh, the AK one hand, at least somewhat. If I have a malfunction with the gun, uh, <clears throat> I don't really have any place around here in my house to actually do this, but let's say I had a wall here. I could press rifle into the wall and say like this arm is down or something like that. I can press rifle into the wall, keep it pretty balanced and stuff like that, and then use my free hand by pressing against the wall, into the wall with my shoulder, and now I can cycle it this way. Conversely, I can also press it into the wall this way and then also cycle it this way. And then obviously you can do it reverse for right-hander. This way is a little bit easier because I can press it into the wall and then cycle it like that and hopefully that will clear any type of malfunction. Or again, cycling into the dirt, whatever you need to do um, with that kind of stuff. For one-handed reloads, that's just going to be kind of, you're just going to have to play with whatever, whatever works for you. If your shooting hand gets hit because it is out here, it's possible, um, you know, that's just something people are going to have to fucking figure out because that is just a shit sandwich. Again, sticking in the dirt, just getting old mag out, new mag in, ah, ah, and figuring it out. I don't really know exactly. I'm going to have to dick with that. I'm not going to do a video on that, but there's just so many that's going to have to uh, do it. But anyway, that's pretty much it. Thank you guys for watching. Hopefully this was more entertaining than anything because I know this is kind of basic information. But for some people who do not know um, exactly how this stuff works hopefully it was helpful and uh, yeah hopefully you guys subscribe and check out my links down below and all that stuff and uh, anyway thank you guys for watching be good